بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم uh, We greet you with assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh on this the 21st day of the blessed month of Ramadan and the Jews for, the, for today you'll find it in my book The Quran and the Moon the Jews for the 21st day Surah Al-Fussilat Surah Al-Shura Surah Al-Zukhruf Surah Al-Dukhan these are the four surahs for the 21st day. <coughs> when the 21st night of the month of Ramadan comes, we are now in the last one-third of the month, and you know that in this last one, one-third day is Laylatul Qadr, on which we have already spoken to you. So we will now continue in our effort to introduce the Antichrist and the, our Christian uh, our Christian uh, uh, viewers in particular will be very interested in what the Quran has to say on the subject of the Antichrist. We have found already <coughs> in uh, Surah Al Saba that Suleiman alayhi salam, the Prophet Solomon, and his encounter with the Queen of Saba or the Queen of Sheba, and uh, the, the movement, the that uh, he wanted her throne to be brought from Yemen to Jerusalem. And in that event, we found that there were two different kinds of speed. One is that of the jinn, the ifrit of the jinn, who had the capacity to bring an object all the way from Yemen to Jerusalem <coughs> at a speed it was astonishing. It's 200 kilo, 2,000 kilometers or more. And uh, I could do it uh, it's so fast that I can finish doing it before you rise from your throne. And then the Quran offered a contrast to the jinn. And that contrast is very important for understanding the subject. That there was a kitab, a book. The Quran does not tell us the name of the book, but certainly it is a book pertaining to aerodynamics because in that book there is knowledge that if you have that knowledge, then someone in the court said, I can bring that throne for you in the twinkling of an eye. And those of you who need how to, who know how to interpret the Quran and apply the Quran to the historical process, you know this is hypersonic hypersonic speed. Then we left that contrast between the jinn and uh, that book and we went to Suleiman alayhi salam and this event in which he had this um, this what we call we consider to have been uh, <coughs> uh, what is it called now uh, a ru'ya um, a vision sorry a vision and Allah showed him, in this vision, someone sitting on his throne. Mm. And the Quran describes that person as a jasad. Of course, he has to be a person who is sitting on the throne. And Suleiman, Allah's blessing be upon him, interpreted the vision. He wants to inherit my throne. So he could be a horse, could he, and cattle. He had to be a human being. But... <coughs> When Musa Islam, uh, he was described as a jasad. Jasad. What is a jasad? When Musa Islam, Moses went up to the mountain to the meeting with Allah, then someone took, told Banu Israel, the Israelites, give me a gold. And he had a, a, a PhD in, 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 um, in chemistry and metallurgy, this fellow. The summary. And he said, give, give me your coal. And then he melted the gold. And he fashioned, or he uh, smelted, a golden calf. It was an amazing act of engineering. Because it was done in such a way that when the wind blew at the calf, the calf would move. And that golden calf was described in the Quran as a just a meaning a body which is lifeless but this one is a human being 
and he wants to inherit the kingdom. How do we know that the Jesed who was shown on the throne wanted to inherit the kingdom? How do we know that? The answer for those who still have the capacity to think, and not all people have that capacity anymore, the answer is to be found in the response of Solomon salam, to the vision. He saw what he saw in that vision that Allah showed him, and he immediately understood the vision, and he responded with a prayer. This is the prayer, and it is in the prayer that we'll understand what he saw. Call a big fairy, Ba'lauza Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim. Call a big fairy. He said, Oh Allah, kindly forgive me. Listen, you don't have to find out what he did, that he wanted forgiveness. Please have some sense. This is his way. Anytime he wants to ask for something, he always asks for forgiveness. So now then, Rabbig Firri, oh Allah, kindly forgive me. Wahabli. Wahabli mulkan la yambagi le ahali min ba'di. Grant me a kingdom which none can inherit after me because I recognize he wants to inherit my kingdom. And also grant me a kingdom which none after me can compare with my kingdom. He wants to have a holy state in Jerusalem and he wants his holy state to be comparable with mine so he made this prayer that there can never be anyone to inherit the holy state of Israel and when Allah answered his prayer Allah caused the holy state of Israel to collapse shortly after he died so none could inherit who it is who wants to inherit his kingdom the answer for those who still have the capacity to think is he is Dajjal. But if you are not impressed, by all means, you can have your own opinion. Just keep it to yourself, please. Don't come and try to argue with me. I don't argue. I say if you're not convinced that I'm correct, don't accept my view. What else can I do? So this is my view. But you have to think about the subject, and if you are convinced that it is Dajjal, then you accept it. When we accept that this was Dajjal sitting on the throne, that Dajjal is the Jasad, we now have to ask the implication, why does Allah describe Dajjal as a Jasad when he described the golden calf as a Jasad, a body without a soul? That golden calf would simply moo when the wind blew. But this is a moo, this is a human being, he's appearing as a human being. And he has to be able to talk, he has to walk, he has to do anything. So what it means that he, he's a jasad? The answer is, he is someone created by Allah who will appear as a human being, but would not have the human ruh or soul or the nafs. So he does not have to answer on Judgment Day for his conduct. He will not be judged on Judgment Day and sent to heaven or hell, like all the jinn and all the human beings. No. When Jesus comes back salam, and kills him, he passes into non-existence. This is what it means to be adjusted. To be adjusted means you are externally programmed. He does not have an independent capacity to think. No. When he speaks, he speaks as someone who is programmed. He does not have a free will, a self-directed will, a capacity to make a free choice. No. Everything in him is programmed. <coughs> so yes, I agree. There is an amazing similarity between the Jal and the Jasad and the phenomenon of artificial, artificial intelligence, which is now raising its head all over the world. We proceed. The Quran went on, after Allah answered the dua, Allah then proceeded to say, in order that there will never be a state comparable to this state, Allah gave 
the jinn up orders to work for Solomon. And these were shayateen, these were evil jinn, not the good one, the believers. Evil jinn are now placed at his disposal and he, they have to work for him. Any order he gives, they have to obey. This is very important to, have to understand the job. The <coughs> the, amongst the evil jinn, there are those who are in chains. The evil jinn are involved in, in stupendous constructions up in the air, sky, and un underneath, below, in the sea and in the earth, going down deep. This is what the jinn are able to do. So if there's a diamond vein deep down in the earth, in, a, in, a, in southern Rhodesia, which is now Zimbabwe, or in South Africa, uh, in Zambia, these jinn are able to locate, they have, they're able to transmit that knowledge to the, the, the scientific, the, the engineering departments and so on in, in uh, what's the name of that city now? Uh, Birmingham. And the scientists are now able to locate diamond veins in Kimberley. And then the, the, <laughs> the lioness come to, big, to dig the biggest hole in the whole world. It's called Big Hole in, in, in Kimberley. And they have African labor, and they pay them peanuts, of course, because it's no longer gold and silver as money. Now it's paper. And now they're able to take out from Kimberley. You have a wheelbarrow, five loaded wheelbarrows of diamonds. This is before the First World War. And when they had got enough, and they're now ready for the First World War, it's the summer of, 20, of 1914, they then shut down Kimberley, because we already have the money that we want to finance the war. Uh, see? So this is, this is the jal now. Uh, Suleiman, Solomon, he has the jinn working for him. And the jinn I ordered to do many things, to, to, to build and to construct and to manufacture things for the, for the temple. And uh, then Allah says, Hadha atauna, this is our gift to you, from nun or amsik bagayri hisab, and this is beyond me. <laughs> yes, this is beyond me. Maybe one day I'll be able to penetrate this. From nun or amsik, you can give or you can re withdraw as you wish without any accounts. And, um, <coughs> We now turn, the Dajjal now is sitting on the throne in that vision. When Suleiman alayhi salam died, the jinn never knew he was dead. Everybody else knew he was dead and they buried him. But the jinn did not know he was dead, why? Because the jinn was seeing someone sitting on his throne holding on to his stuff. And they thought it was Solomon, Suleiman al-Islam. How could they do that? How could that fellow sitting on the throne deceive them into believing that he is Solomon? Because of something, a property of his stuff, the min sa'a of his stuff, has within it the capacity to intervene in, in time and in forward and backward movement of time. That one was aerodynamics. Movement in time and movement in space at a speed like the twinkling of the eye. And this one is backward and movement, forward movement in time like the young men in the cave. So the fellow sitting on the throne is able to show them Solomon standing and sitting and talking and moving and so on and they believe he's alive and that's how you can see that on television today anytime you want and that's why they have continued working because they believe he's Solomon if they disobey him Allah will punish them and so up to this moment that I am speaking 
the Tsar is still sitting on the throne as a vision, and he is deceiving the jinn. <coughs> and the jinn are working for him. And hence, you see, modern Western civilization, please go to my lecture on an Islamic eschatological explanation of modern Western civilization, because I don't have the time to do it now. Modern Western civilization did not achieve this momentous scientific and technological revolution with application to military science by itself alone. The jinn were there helping them because this civilization was created by the Jal. Just look at the link between Pax Britannica and Jerusalem, Pax Americana and Jerusalem and Pax Judaica. Western civilization has a has a <coughs> a very, very mysterious relationship with the Holy Land. This is, of course, for people to think, not for people who eat the biryani and go home and sleep. <coughs> so now we have two things here. We have backward and forward movement in time, and we also have movement in space at a speed like the twinkling of an eye. We now come to that moment in history where Gog and Magog are going to be checkmated. And in the previous lecture, I came to the conclusion that Zulkarnain rep represents two generations, two times in history. The first one, which commenced in the region of the Black Sea, was described in the Quran. And a second carnage to come Again, we shall commence in the region of the Black Sea, and which will, re which will result, which will witness once again, Gog and Magog being contained. The first time, they were contained behind an iron barrier. The second time, we don't know what it is going to But we are expecting that in the Great War, which is coming, they're going to be contained for a second time by Russia, because Russia now controls not only Crimea, Russia controls the whole of that coastline of Ukraine, all the way to Moripal, and now probably further on. So Russia commands the, the Black Sea. This is enough for now, so you can understand where did this hypersonic speed come from? If the Jin are helping them with the intercontinental ballistic missiles and so on, from where came this hypersonic speed? which makes those look so pedantic, so slow. Answer from the book. We think that's enough for you for today in this introduction uh, to the Antichrist. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.